What is up y'all? It's your boy Tony Holiday. Back at it again, another video. Today we're gonna be making this sound in Logic. It's kind of like a dead mouse style pluck that he's famous for. We're gonna be doing it all with stock plugins, using alchemy, and also stock audio effects. And it sounds like this. Before we get started, please go follow your boy on all socials. It's Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, it's Tony Holiday. Uh, but yeah guys, pretty easy one with this. I actually watched a little bit of the Dead Mouse Masterclass and this is one of the sample videos that he gives away and shows you how he actually makes this sound. Now he does it with actual like real analog synthesizers. However, he does show you how to do it in Serum and then I've just taken those steps and I've actually kind of transposed it to Alchemy so that you can do it with just Logic stock plugins. That's pretty much it. So let's just get straight into the video and I'm gonna show you how to make this sound, but yeah. Now that we're inside Logic, you can kind of see what I have here. So at the top, I just have this little uh, region called Pluck and it's a mousetrap is what I've just named it just to kind of keep it easy. I always label my things with these little brackets where it says Pluck like that, just so I can kind of go through the library easier to find what I want. The bottom one is just an Apple loop kick drum, which I'll kind of show afterwards just to give you like an idea of what it would sound like with some drums on top. First thing that we're gonna wanna do here is actually just go up to the plus here and do a new software instrument and then we're gonna add alchemy to this. Now this is what my default alchemy looks like. However, yours probably won't if you haven't set it up this way. So the first thing that we wanna do is go file, initialize preset. And then that's gonna set this up like this. Now the next thing that I do is go to this quality little drop down here where it says great. I'll click that and I'll go to ultra. And what that's gonna do is just make sure that we're getting the best possible quality sound coming out of um, alchemy here. So what we're gonna do here is go to this uh, oscillator A here. So from global, go down to this A tab and you're gonna click that. What I'll actually do for you guys as well is um, I'll throw this MIDI down in the description for you guys to download because I know a lot of the time when you're doing sound design, it's kind of annoying when you can get the actual sound, but when you wanna emulate something that someone else is doing, you sort of want the chords to go with it as well. So the first thing that we're gonna do is actually just duplicate the voices here. So that's with one voice. We're gonna actually bump this up here to four. And then the detune, um, this is what that's gonna sound like with just four voices, and it's just gonna be with the uh, detune at 0%. Versus if that one. You can hear that there's just more oscillators playing essentially. So we're gonna bump that up to four. And then the next thing that we wanna do here is bring this detune up, which is actually gonna kind of stereo spread the oscillators to kind of give it just more of a wide sound to it. So we'll move that up and I'll give you what it sounds like. Now the kind of goal of what I'm aiming for here is I don't want to have too many overtones where it's like almost too crispy, but I just want it to be like a nice solid wide sound. So we're going to set it at about 20.4% on that one. Now the next thing that we're going to do here is actually add a filter to this. So that kind of takes away some of the high end as well. And what we're gonna do to this is modulate it so that it actually moves um, how we tell it to based on an envelope or an LFO. And that's kind of how you can get different sounds to move in different ways and really manipulate them to sound like something that they aren't essentially. So we're gonna go here under this oscillator A tab still. We're gonna hit this little on for the uh, filter. And for that, I actually like to go to this one here, the LP2MG, so the LP12DB Rich. And this cutoff is kind of the um, main component here that we're gonna modulate. So if we bring this down, I'll kind of show you what I mean with the cutoff. So as you can hear, that's kind of taking out a lot of the high end and it's bringing it down. So we wanna find the sweet spot where we can still have the sound, but it's not necessarily um, so buzzy in the top end. So let's try to play with that for a second. I think we'll start at this 441. And now to modulate this, we actually just click that. And then you can see down here in this modulation section, it says filt one cutoff A. So that is gonna be the modulation section of that particular knob. And with this one, what we wanna do is hit on, and go to LFO, LFO one sign here. And what that does is now pops up this window on the right side, which shows us the actual LFO of the modulation that we're doing. Now we don't actually wanna use a sine wave. 
we want it to be kind of plucky. So we're actually gonna go to here to basic. We're gonna click this little drop down, basic ramp down. And this is the actual shape that we wanna use when it comes to making this pluck sound. So if we do that now, you still won't hear anything, but this depth um, knob here, if you watch the filter cutoff, will actually move the um, uh, modulation and you'll see it by an orange ring. So the blue ring is actually like the base sound that we've set it at. The orange one is gonna be the modulated amount. So if we move that up, you can hear it's kind of starting to take place. However, it's still not what we want. We don't want this to be on either side of it. We want the base to be right where we've set it at that 441. So you can do that by clicking bipolar. And now you see the cutoff is just set by going upwards from that. Now he also likes it a little bit faster as well. So the rate we can bump up here to 1.8. And when you have that sync on, that's actually synced to your BPM. So 125 is kind of a dance BPM. And this rate here is the rate in which this LFO is gonna modulate the filter cutoff. So if we play this now, it's a lot quicker. It has that more movement to it. And then this cutoff is being modulated by the amount of depth that we've put on down here. So actually, I'm gonna move this down a little bit more and kind of dial in the sound a little bit. So I think that sounds kind of where we wanna have this with Alchemy. Um, but what we're gonna do is we're actually further post-process this using stock plugins on the audio effects channel. So I don't really love the effects that come in Alchemy. They don't sound as good as a lot of the ones that are actually just you put on the channel strip. So we're gonna do it uh, through a bus, which is gonna make it a little bit easier for us. If you do wanna just save this Alchemy patch, you can just go here to this Save As tab, and then that'll save in your Alchemy patches to kinda of have as a base. Then you can actually affect it from there if you wanna do different stuff every time. But I'm gonna show you how to save it as like a patch, so that'll actually just go to your Logic library, and it's much easier to just click that and that'll have all of the uh, external effects on it as well. We'll close Alchemy, and we're gonna go down to the sends in the channel strip. Now, if we click that and go bus, and we'll go to bus one, this is what's gonna come up, and that's auxiliary one. We can hold option and click that little ring there, and that's gonna make sure that the bus is sending to the auxiliary channel um, at zero decibels. So that's kind of just like the base layer there. And we're gonna go in here and add a space designer for some reverb to kind of bring the sound out a little bit more. Setting that I usually wanna go with is maybe like just a small space, like let's do vocal ambiance, which is under um, small spaces, plate reverbs, vocal ambiance. And then the wet we can actually um, mess with here, which is gonna kind of determine how much of the verb we wanna have on there. First thing that I wanna do here is go to this output EQ, turn on a um, low cut, and we're gonna bring that up to, I wanna say maybe like 150. And then we can also turn this bus down a little bit. And the next thing that I wanna add here is gonna be a stereo delay. So we'll click that just under the space designer. We'll go delay, stereo delay, stereo. And this setting here, we wanna route this not from straight, but ping pong L, which is a ping pong delay. And the mix I'm gonna turn down to probably like around the 60, 65 region there. And then an eighth note on each the left and the right delays. And now this is what that's gonna sound like. So the sound's really starting to take shape, guys. That's kind of where I would leave it for there. And then what you can do with this bus is determining how much of the actual effects you wanna to send to it, you can use this knob here. So if we wanna do nothing, and that's just with what alchemy is, we can also even go to six decibels above zero. Way too much. But I like to just set it to zero. So you click, you hold option and click that and then just drag it and then you can kind of set the tone as to where you want it. I 
think that sounds good. And that's kind of the beauty of having buses is you can actually change it per track or different parts of the song. You can automate the actual bus to, you know, go up and down, bring more effects in or not have as many. Now, one more thing I really want to show you is when you can actually automate the filter and you'll hear Joel do this a lot in tracks when he's kind of building up to something a little bit bigger. So if you want to press A on your keyboard to open automation, and then this little one here, we can click down to Alchemy, Source A, Filter 1, Filter 1 Cutoff, and click that. So this is the base cutoff that we have that we actually set inside Alchemy at 193 that's being modulated. But if we maybe click here, because say like after this part is going to be more of a chorus where a lot more drums come in and stuff like that, we can just make it bring, bring that up to like a thousand hertz. And now this is what that's going to sound like. So what that's doing is automating the filter cutoff and opening it as the track goes on, which just gives it kind of, you know, more sound coming in, more stuff is building up. And that's how you can really build some cool tracks as well. And then what you want to do is maybe throw just like a kick drum underneath to kind of give it like a little bit of a dead mouse feel to it. This is one thing that kind of frustrates me about Logic is you can't just save these patches as is with buses. You kind of have to use a little bit of a workaround. So what you're going to do here is go up to your library. And if you just click save down here on this software instrument track, it actually won't save the bus and what we've put on there, which is kind of unfortunate. But what I like to do here is actually just press your mixer. So go to X. Now aux one is the channel that we've set. It's bus number one. We will actually just right click that create track. And now we have that just underneath our software instrument here. Now, if you highlight both of those, so you hold um, command and you click both. And now you go right click, create track stack, create. Now this here is actually just a track stack of both the bus and the MIDI with Alchemy playing. And what we can do here is just click save in this library. Let's just call it um, pluck mouse. Now, if we actually go create a new software instrument, so this is blank, it has nothing on it. We go into our library, which you can do by just clicking this one here in the top left and go to user patches. Now we have this pluck mouse here. And now what that has is it's the track stacks. So we have the alchemy, um, no MIDI region, obviously, but we have the soft synth. It's routed to bus six. If we open our mixer, we see here that bus six has both the space designer and the stereo delay on it as well. But yeah, guys, that's pretty much it for me. So that's how you can make this cool dead mouse style plug in logic using just stock plugins. If you like this video, give your boy a thumbs up, make sure to subscribe, go follow your boy, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and we'll see you in the next one, guys. I'm hoping to do some more sound design tutorials in the future here. But yeah, till next time. Cheers.